Are the president okay on to that? It's 631. Uh, I'm Andrew Eubank, President Pro Tem. David is out still coming down with that. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, do a roll call. We have Mary Helen Thicken, Ray Lambert, and Jason Talley. So we have a quorum present. So if we could, I'd like to go ahead. And Mary Helen, would you lead us in the invitation, please? <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father. Please be with us this evening as we discuss these items on the agenda for the benefit of our community. Uh, let's make good decisions, fairly, equitably. Be at our shoulders when we need to make hard decisions and bless us when we do make those decisions. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. If we may stand, we have to pledge allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, indivisible, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. First order of business is a review and consideration of the minutes from the December 17th, 2012. I believe you should have a copy of those before you. And I'd like the record to note that Mayor Ram Ramirez, excuse me, uh, Ram Ramirez has joined us and it is now 6.34. So if you can take a minute to review the minutes. I have reviewed the minutes and I'm uh, going to be approving this. I have a motion by Mary Helen Seekin that the minute from December 17, 2012 be approved. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ray Lambert. All in approving the minutes from December 17, 2012 meeting, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Passes. Now for the next order of business, we go to the new business, <coughs> consideration and action on the FEDC bylaw. Uh, Executive Director has made copies of this for us, and Jesse, if you would. Does everyone have copies about the audience? Okay, <coughs> I would like to commend Mr. Banks for his efforts in getting us put together for an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. That's so. Hope we make the job easier when we go through this. I like coffee. If we can, just to expedite this, I'd like to go through and go over these page by page, article by article. If we go through it, uh, there's could be and will be corrections, I would assume, to be made on this, and also some explanations of where some of this information comes from. So without further ado, let's start on page one. Down through article 3.02, anything from 3.01 and above, this is redundant and repetitious from what was done. Try to explain what we did. It's simply anything that was added is underlined. Anything that is recommended be removed has been struck through. In 3.02, the information instructions I understood, if we want it pretty much parallel our board term and limitation to what the city had done, uh, Lou Rosenberg, who is the city's attorney, provided me with the I believe it's 1999 city charter, and I did try to simply come in there and basically mirror what they did. Uh, and try to quickly go over that. We're talking about we're going to continue to stagger two-year term in no more than three consecutive terms. 
any individual who has been appointed for three term cannot be appointed for the board again for a tick year. That, that mimics again what the city has done. Mm -hmm. uh, then we talk out, we struck out a little bit of where it used to be that each alderman would appoint the councilman. Now it is a unanimous or a board decision by the council. So that has been struck, stricken from this. Also, at the end of 3.02, what we did had we had amendments that were attached to this before. And what we did is we just moved those from being amendments that were separate and have now included them as part of the new bylaw. So that is strictly just moving mm -hmm. what was amendment before to this. I, have, <clears throat> I recommend one correction about midway through the first paragraph. It says where the sentence says city is located comma that would be sufficient to I believe that word should be qualified, qualified yeah. rather than quality quality qualified person residency requirements thank you for noting that <coughs> And do we still call it Section B, or is it Type? Type B, and we should make that change. Type A, Type B, so we are a Type B corporation. So the, where we have the um, designation of Section 4B, it should be Type 4B? Type. Uh, Any, uh, anywhere in there, Andy, if they now refer to these not as just. Type B. Yeah. It's, it's Type B, not Section 4B. Right. Top. Type, capital T-Y-P-E. And capital B. Of the city, of B. Mm -hmm. So all those references, and it would be type A right. for that one reference. <coughs> when we get through with it, can I see? Sure. Your copy to make sure I have marked all of them that you're referencing. Okay. Okay. So as you see those, I will make sure I include that. Thank you again. Any other board members have items on that? <coughs> on 3.03, uh, the strike out well, to One thing, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice President, the last sentence on uh, 302, any governing body director who ceases to be a member of the governing board of the city, of the governing body shall cease to be director of the corporation. It doesn't apply anymore. So we should strike that whole sentence. You're correct. Anything else? 3.03. Uh, it struck out the part about the including vacancy for an increase in number of directors. That can't happen, so there's no reason to have that in there. So our, our number of board members is set. So it is what it is. Yes, yeah, my law. Uh, the annual meeting, 3.04. All we added there was the board shall have the annual board meeting first of October or the first regular meeting thereafter. Similar to this year, we didn't meet in October. So any of the others from 303 down to 313, those were no changes that we noted in the prior meeting. To 313, it talked about the committee and from the understanding and notes I had, we were going to have one required standing committee and that would be the budget, finance, and audit. It doesn't preclude having other boards or standing committees and all, but we did want to have that one, so I have included that. And 
the duty will be assigned by the committee, and all committee must be approved by vote of the board of directors. So that's my understanding of what y'all want, how you wanted to amend this. Is that satisfactory? Was that y'all's intent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 4.01, the last tenant was removed because now the, uh, the city does not have a person official with city is not on the board. Down to 4.06, beginning of the second tenant, if there was an error on it, it was just <coughs> men or corrected the wind. Uh, I skipped 4.05, I apologize. They talked about the Brett Pire delegated to another officer or agent uh, reading that was included in there in the case and in the situation where we're appointing <coughs> an executive director, uh, Mr. Jesse, to act on our behalf. We now it's in the minute so we can do that. Continuing to four point oh eight. I have a good question on that part. Uh, it says arrange and coordinate annual audit. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this, but should we put a, a timeline of that annual audit? Um, what is typically the do you know what the City. Well, the city is going to start next week, uh, and that's when you know. Unless y'all change it, that's when I would engage uh, the Wagner uh, CPA firm to, to undertake ours as well. And we normally follow the city's uh, timeline, right? Okay. Which is at the normally around the end of the fiscal year, uh, and so it takes a while to to amass all the documents and right. put everything together and then turn them over to the auditor. But normally they start about this time of the year, and that's where it's been in the past. So we, so we don't have a firm. I'm sorry. We don't have a firm due by today. No, well, not unless you all said it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's hard to dictate because again, we follow the city, or they have historically followed the city. There's nothing that says we have to. Like this past year, the city audit, uh, and I'm going off of my understanding. It was a little bit delayed as they went through and you know, uh, worked the books over, changing the auditing firm. So it kind of dictated by the schedule. There's nothing that says we have to use the city's auditor. Uh, we don't. I, I don't know if we see a fee. Is that book billed directly? Does she bill that directly? It bills, uh, they bill directly to yeah. us. What is the cost factor? Uh, uh, it's it's been averaging anywhere from twenty five hundred to three thousand, just depending. Last year was a bit different than, than the years before, uh, but. With uh, Mr. Malcolm Gully, it was always within the range of about twenty-five hundred to three thousand. So I expect the same. Yeah. 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 Do we not give the question? Typically, when we order order audit or whatever, we actually send out an engagement letter to the auditor, tell them what we want, what it composes, and all. Did you do we that? We haven't done it this time, but we did it last time. She sent us an engagement letter, and normally when she comes in, we discuss with her and, okay. and talk it over, and then she'll give me something. I, I haven't discussed it with her yet, because I wasn't sure which way the board would want it to go on that. But, but I can call her tomorrow and, and, and find out about that. Okay, because I think we need to have a clear scope of what the audit going to encompass to provide her the induction to the deep depth detail, etc. I, I also think that uh, and usually it was customary that uh, the city and, and even the FEDC audit would be completed prior to the fiscal year, the beginning of the fiscal year. Because that way, in other words, you're going to coincide and see where you're at. And very possibly, you would know the, 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 even though you have worked, you worked the, the budget prior to that, you know, it would only be feasible for us to have that audit done, you know, at, by the end of September 30th, you know. 
September the 30th, the day lined up to September the 30th, which is the whole fiscal year, one October to September the 30th. Um, you know, it, it depends what the board wants to do. Uh, and I guess, you know, this could be incorporated uh, in with the... Uh, that may be part of the goat that you have with the government with the choir. It is... Uh, 646. I like the minute to reflect. I'm sorry. I didn't get the tune. Then my hearing to join us. Mr. Harry and Mr. Strozier, President Strozier is killed. So I'm the best you got for that. Good place. <laughs> However, all checks also shall also be signed by the president, comma, vice president, comma. There should be a comma after treasurer. Well, I'm going to tell you that's negotiable with the, with the new rules and grammar writing. Okay, okay. I would be doing that. <laughs> Old fashioned folks like us would have put it in there, but the new way they are actually leaving that out. Okay. Okay. Thank I you for that. I don't have a problem easy. with the board want that in there or not. It's not that technical. Uh, do you see a correction on there where it talked about the signatures that we talked about? Were any two of the, those of the president, vice president, treasurer, or executive director signed? <coughs> And then also treasurer duty, we added I arranged and coordinate annual audit. Uh, when Mick Wagner, you know it's her schedule, she's going to be here. I think it'd be appropriate if you did invite Jason to attend okay. at that time. Yeah, it'll be on the 14th, right? If you come be here for two weeks, yes. Sorry. And you know, normally you have a, a meeting, you know, to discuss what's going to happen. But. <clears throat> Question on 5.01, 5.02. Mr. Harry, we're going down through this, the bylaws. And I'm going to talk just a minute, uh, just a little bit about the potential conflict of interest. Uh, as I'm going through this, trying to rewrite, I also try to go back and be a little bit informative of some of the information. I actually looked up the Texas Government Code 171. If that was still appropriate for us to leave in here, and that is a, a government code law. And I've actually printed that out. I think you might need to look at what it talks about. If you have 10% or more voting stock of a business, or 10% or more than $15,000 of more fair value of a business entity and things like that, that's what we're talking about. You need to come in and file for your statement of con potential conflict. If you haven't read that, uh, I have copies here uh, that you need to do so. And I'll leave this with Mr. Uh, I'll make yeah. copies for everybody. And so that, that's something that could be done. Uh, we just have to be careful in that. I think what I understood from the meeting is we also want to go further than just the government requirements on it. If we have a conflict of interest, in our business dealings or something like that. And that's where I came in and said basically to maintain total transparency and integrity. If we have a conflict of interest, it's even lesser than that stated in the code. While you may not have to sign an affidavit or such, you still should notify the board and committee of your conflict and just uh, abstain from participating in both. Really, I think in, in the problem, in the, in the discussion uh, situation of any particular business, I think at that point in time, if there is anybody that is, you know, has some involvement at that point in time, you know, and first said, well, look, I'm going to have to fill out one of the forms and, you know, you will be acted upon, but I will be abstaining from it. Right. And we have two levels of conflict here. Yeah. One of them is your government code conflict, 
which is addressed in the policy that we've given there, and then a second conflict would be to one that's maybe not to the level that talks about this if you still need to. And I'm going to use an example. Say I have a customer that is uh, a long customer or any kind of customer that's applying for some kind of benefit from FEDC. While I may not have an interest directly in that business or something, I have a customer that relayed that, and that should probably be something I'd abstain from. Yeah. It's not required by the government code, but I think for integrity purposes, it's more than it should be. And I think you can each think of an example for your business. If I hear no objection, I want to continue down to 6.03. We just basically talk about the audit, and they'll be scheduled not less than annually. And that was the last. Well, could we please have Exhibit A if we're going to mention it in here under the fee schedule? It should be included. There's no Exhibit A. No, 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 I'm sorry? An exhibit A? It's 7.02, the exhibit A. Yes. Let's attach that as part. It's in the files, uh, you know, on, on the original bylaws that were written up. Okay, but if we're going to amend this, I think it should be included. I actually looked up fee schedules and the filing of the fee schedules and things like that, and it's really not discussed much in the, on the internet that I saw. It just, you did it once. Yeah, and it, it, it's back and get your comment. <coughs> if we're going to, if we're going to note it and refer to it, it should be attached. Don't you think? Yes, sir. On the audit, uh, going back to, the, you know, and we're, it, it specifies that we have an annual audit. Now, if, I know it, never had happened, but if there was to be some question in regards to something that would require another audit aside from the one that is done annually, wouldn't we have to put something there or to be covered? Well, it did say if we had to require an independent audit annually. There's nothing that precludes you from having additional audit if the need required for what I'm reading. It's just saying at a minimum, one. you have to have one. one. Okay. Now, if the audit had some findings and there's no way to speculate what that might be, mm -hmm. that you could have to have additional audit into yeah. whatever scope or field that would require. And it says in there that uh, the seat council may require at any time uh, independent mm -hmm. audit of the corporation's books. Yeah, so it's not specifying just an annual audit, <clears throat> this requirement. If and when, let's say, the city council was to uh, require an audit on the FDC, who is responsible for uh, paying that audit? Since the city is requesting it. Are we obligated or is the city obligated? I can't answer that. I look at it that if the city requires it, it should be the city. Well, I can do a counterpoint and that's correct. Uh, let's hypothetically say there's a discrepancy in the book. And that those books are the discrepancy are because of our failure to properly account for something. Okay, and that's the point. How are you going to cover all the bases and all? I well, don't know. Well, the, the, the only, my mention is because it says that, you know, the city can require an audit, you know, at any given time if they want to. Now, if they do require one, you know, are they, since they're the ones that are required, you know. I don't think I can even we just, that bridge when we got to it. To it. Up, you know, but. Yeah, so I don't think we could obligate them, or I'm thinking out loud. Right. If the city requires it, they say, fine, if you want us to have it, you have to pay for it. No, they have a right to require 
left it to have a dollar. Well, they, are, they are the boss of us, so I would assume that they have the authority. Well, they, to an extent, they do have authority, you know. But I, I think they can obligate expenditures on our behalf, though. In other yeah, words, they right. can tell us. Tell us, you know. You know. So, but once again, if it happens, then you have to address it at that point in time. Uh, but with the group and what we're doing now, I don't think that that would be probably an issue that comes up. Uh, the only thing I want to make a note of is um, F, if I could please, um, under the 4.08 under the treasurer. I would like to expand that statement a little bit. Let's get the fair financial reports. Um, you know, I think it needs to be prepare and re prepare comparative budget and financial reports to be reported at each meeting of the uh, FEDC or however we would want to word it. But I want to be sure that, you know, there's a report prepared at each meeting that we have that would be the standard report that we'll use and of course the uh, committee will be determining what that format will be but uh, I just thought that might be a good place to, to put it because if we're no longer here the, a new group sees that oh this is what I've got to do every month that we have this meeting so I would like to expand that uh, what are your thoughts on that? So prepare and re prepare. prepare and prevent financial report Monthly and annually? Well, I would uh, really, <coughs> if we're doing that um, and reporting monthly, I don't know that the annually thing needs to be done because it's going to be uh, prepared at the budget time, which is your annual budget deal. And did we actually put anything in here about um, the budget? You have a thing for me to do. Right. Well, and that's always something that can be amended to later if we feel that it needs to be added. But I would just say uh, prepare comparative budget slash financial reports to be reported at each meeting. Something like that. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll write it down and, and yeah. give it to you, but that's my like, thinking. Like now when we're having sometimes two or three meetings a month, do you want to do one every week? Mm -hmm. Well, more like a monthly, monthly, yeah, monthly. monthly. I would say, say monthly, monthly, limited. monthly. Limited. monthly. Limited. Make more sense. Okay. And monthly, and and, and and I think in the, and I know that we used to do it uh, uh, in the report, and it was it was done in a detailed form, mm -hmm. and it was, and uh, just it would itemize all of the statements, you know, that were paid out, you know, for that month. You know, mm -hmm. and we'll, it would reflect on the budget report itself. You know, mm -hmm. if four thousand, if forty thousand was paid out for last month, the items that were listed there would amount to forty thousand. You know, mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's good. Was, okay, if you uh, <coughs> if the committee in agreement, then we will. Uh, We'll add that, amend that then. Put down prepare monthly comparative budget financial There you go. That's that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Monthly financial. Yeah. Prepare monthly. Okay. Did you get it? I got it. Okay, good. Okay. Does that work? I got it. Should I get them standing? Well, if you're doing it monthly, you're going to automatically get it at least annually. Yeah. But I'm saying so you yeah. prepare yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just going to strike the. Okay. No, because it's already done. Is that it? Anything else, ladies and gentlemen of the community? Well, I think you did a great job. Thank you. If I may, what I'll do, I'll make these amendments one more time and we'll bring this back at the next regular meeting for the final review. And approval, hopefully. 
the attachment will be uh, And we'll have the attachment to the power form. <coughs> Is that acceptable to the committee? Yes. Well, can we discuss that just a little bit? With the very few changes that need to be made, why couldn't we approve with those changes? I have another job to do also. Let me see how fast I can get it done. So uh, I have more meetings than all this week to my paying job. <laughs> Let's see if I can get those done that quick. And if, and if we have a meeting before then, that'll be fine. Is if we can audit, I mean, edit it, yeah. then, then, then I can put in all the changes in consultation with you and Mary Helen. Okay. Uh, <coughs> that, is, that is one of the things we did is I typed this in Word format. So we can go ahead and edit it, and then you'll just have to remove the strike through. And, I, and would, I would recommend leaving that because yeah. doesn't the city council Correct. see Correct. We'll do it. We're going to actually have two of them, I would suspect. One that will be the final corrected one, that will be the formal one that filed, and then we'll provide the city with the structure and underline one for the council to quickly identify the changes. But we need one that properly formatted for the file. Well, and ultimately, we still need to vote. We'll need to vote after it's yes. Any other inf information on the bylaw before we move to number two? I don't believe there's any action needs to be taken forth at this time on the bylaw. Number two is FEDC budget for fifth year 2013 and all the current FED projects approved by the previous council and board. December. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> um, so what I'm going to do is go through it again and, and explain what we did and how we came up with it. Uh, and what, how we got to the budget as, as it is. And again, keep in mind this is as of 1 October um, of 2004. At the time, and what we do in our budget preparation is I would come up with notes in terms of brief the board at, at, at the workshops. And I start with uh, we have in the bank at that time. I go over uh, the reports from. Um, QuickBooks uh, Pro, in terms of our expenditures for the year, we give a report on that and how much we spent. And then I report as to what, what the balances are in the bank. I give a report as to what uh, the revenues for the following year projected income are going to be. Uh, so, and then based on that, I put down the projects and most of the projects that we have are continuing ongoing projects and we continue to spend until we can uh, complete the projects. Uh, I talk about the debt service, which is also a continuing thing, long term. And then any new things that have been added on, and there are some things that I'll go through again as I go through the report. So I give an overview, and, and, and I'm just giving you the process, and I'll go through it all. And I'll list out the expenditures uh, projected for the year uh, by category. And then this year, what I, I did, uh, uh, broke it down a little bit closer in terms of the infrastructure projects. Uh, this is on page three. So if I may, then I'd like to go through and talk about 
uh, what we did with the budget. And the balances, and again, some of these things are self-explanatory. Uh, that's what we had at the beginning as of September the 30th, a uh, bank balance of 8775 checking account of 639864 and 78 A CD that we have maintained, uh, we've had it pretty <coughs> much as I've been with the FDC as part of our reserves. $56,776.43. Total in the bank as of September the 30th is $705,416.77. So that's what we had at the bank, in the bank, starting uh, a new budget you know, for the fiscal year. And then we had yet to receive uh, the sales tax receipt for September 2012. So that came in at $50,597.78. Uh, $597 so total cash in the bank at the end of fiscal year 2012 was $756,014.55. Projected income for the year, and I would come to that basically on the beer warehouse. We rent the beer warehouse at $250 a month uh, per event. Um, do we actually, we being FDC, actually all the beer where we the building. We, we bought the building when we were doing the hike and bike trail. Okay. Um, and there have been discussions in the past uh, to either we could divest us, ourselves in the beer warehouse, sell it to a private owner, or maybe work some kind of arrangement with the city where the city manages the beer warehouse. Are there other assets that we own, that the WGC owns? Well, the, the beer warehouse and the properties that we have. Uh, okay, I'm, I guess I'm and, buildings. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I meant buildings. Oh, what buildings, what, what, but I'm saying the, the depot, you know, okay. is, is the only other one that we have. What are we doing with that? Uh, the depot is, is one of those projects that we brought it back in, uh, put it back in place. We renovated it to a certain point. Uh, and I presented it to the board to see what actions the board want to take with the depot. The depot needs uh, heating and air conditioning. It's got electricity. It's insulated on the front part, but not the back part, which was the actual cargo holding uh, uh, area. And it doesn't have bathrooms. It never had bathrooms. Uh, we extended a water line, uh, and there is a sewer line on the side of the road there that we could uh, link up to. At one point I had recommended to the board to allow to install bathrooms and then start thinking about how we could uh, install heating and air conditioning. Uh, the cost is going to be, you know, it's going to be expensive to do all that. The intent with the depot from the beginning was to make it into a museum. Um, but we haven't moved any further from that. We haven't made any other expenditures other than to do the maintenance on the building keep it clean inside, cut the grass from the outside. Uh, when windows are broken, we repair the windows and keep it in you know, as good a condition as we can. But that's another thing that the boards are going to have to consider what to do in the future with that building. So anyway, the beer warehouse basically on past experience, that's, that's how much we make in terms of rental income. We rent it out for $250. <coughs> Uh, and I've been telling people that that amount may not stay the same. It could change based on what the boards think we need to do. do but for right now, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. On, on the, when they were in the, when they rent the warehouse, uh, the two fifty covers everything for cleaning up or yes. Uh, we rent it for two hundred and fifty dollars. If I remember correctly, I think the the fee was two hundred dollars. And there was a fifty dollar right. deposit, and then the <coughs> well, it's it, that it, to the deposit is not refundable. You know, when, when we if you come in, they say you want to rent the beer warehouse. We sign out a little, you know, you want to call it a contract, but it's a one page paper, and you tell me you want to rent it for X amount of X date. I verify that the date is open. In order to hold the date for you, we require that you give a fifty dollar deposit. If you cancel the, the date, then we retain the 
$50 because we've lost revenue if somebody else wanted it and you had it for that date. Uh, in the initial uh, year that we had the beer warehouse, the $50 deposit was also like the cleaning deposit. If they cleaned the warehouse and left it in the same condition it was when they took it, then we reimbursed them the $50. But that got too hard to, uh, to regulate. So then we just started saying, you know, it's $250 total, and that includes the, uh, you know, the cleaning fee. So we, we pay to clean the warehouse after the event. <coughs> Do we, is somebody under contract to do that? Or we, we've basically that? been using, I was using different people. Uh, Freddie Ortiz and his family have, have been uh, the ones that have been doing it. Uh, that can change as well. And I've told everybody, you know, that that doesn't have to stay that way. But the thing with his family is that uh, sometimes there's short notice things on the, on the warehouse. And if we have one or two events, like on Friday and Saturday night, then they're always willing to come in and, and prepare the place and make it ready for um, for the new users. But that could change. Not seventy five hundred. That's 30, 30 rentals at two fifty. So um, did we do that last year? Yes, at least thirty. That's a two more, two more. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes, uh, especially during holidays, uh, the busiest time for the beer warehouse is around graduation and uh, summer weddings. And uh, we've had, you know, I think we have five or six weddings this year. Uh, during the holidays, everybody wants the same dates, uh, especially, you know, Christmas and... Uh, and so you're the one who schedules that? Yes, they, they come. And I have that as one of the responsibilities that I have. It's worked okay, uh, you know, I know this is not the meeting to, to discuss it, but it seems to me like we shouldn't be in the entertainment. I understand. Business. And you can get out of that's what I'm saying to you all, yeah. you know, that the board decides what you all want to do. Yeah. It's very possible that uh, being that, uh, you know, uh, the city, you know, would have maybe the staff to do it and to handle it, you know. It, it, now that, you know, there are people, different people, in the city council that uh, would make sure that it's done properly and accordingly. You know, I, I, I tend to believe that that's something that we could think about in the, for the future is to work out something with the city. Or, you know. Or, you know, it's, it's more advantageous to sell the thing and let somebody else have the headache. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. not a lot of income. Well, the thing about it, uh, you, you know, headache. yeah, right. Because uh, I think uh, the FDC has invested a lot of money into it, into fixing it, you know, the way it is now. And it still needs some work, but, you know, what, whether to invest additional money or not, that's, you know, a question that we may have to look at. But uh, I think that's something that we can think down the line. <clears throat> and then um, interest account, of course, uh, it's not very high, so projecting about $550 on that for the year. We still have the senior apartment loan payment, uh, and that comes in at uh, $12,715 per year. And this was a $134,000 loan that we made to the company that built the senior apartments. As part of the requirement for them to get the loan to build the apartments from the Texas uh, Health and um, let's see, Texas Department of uh, Housing and Community Affairs, uh, that was a 10 percent <coughs> match that the city had to put in, um, and I believe the loan was about 1.3, 1.4 million. So we loaned them 134,000, and at, at a 5 percent rate, um, and they've been paying religiously on the first of the month uh, thousand fifty nine dollars and sixty six cents that they submit every month. And what's the, the term of the loan? I'm sorry? What's the term? Uh, I, I'd, I'd have to check on that, you know. But, uh, that's going to be very close to 15. Do we have a subordinated land on that property? 
I'm sorry. Do we have a second lien on that yes. property? Thing? Jason, all these documents, I'm, I'm preparing them for you. We'll do this. And then on um, projected sale of land, we have several offers right now and contracts uh, that are yet to be closed and finalized. And part of that is uh, 88 acres at the business park. Uh, we have a contract right now with two companies uh, from um, from Laredo, uh, two oil service companies for 60 acres, 30 acres plus or minus, you know, on each one. The contracts uh, were ready to be signed, but then there were some questions referenced uh, the oil, the mineral rights, and how the company wanted to restrict the FEC's ability to go onto the property. And if we, let's say we want to lease the land or part of the land or our mineral rights. Uh, so that's been under debate with uh, the company's attorney since about September. I checked with Dominic uh, Carvajal this, this afternoon about that. There's still some issues that uh, haven't been worked out. So that's something that's probably going to have to come back to the board uh, to discuss. Because uh, depending on the changes that the company attorneys want to make and depending on what we want to do with, with the property. Um, so that's a contingent amount, projected sale of land, based on, I know, uh, if we can get these uh, details worked out with the company. And that two contract for 450 total? Uh, no, the, the two contracts come out to about uh, 360000 Okay. And then uh, we have uh, a two-acre contract on the highway on Paloma Drive um, with uh, Eric uh, Rodriguez and his, um, uh, Mr. Eric and Lisa Rodriguez uh, for two acres at 56,000 uh, that, that we're, and that also, the, there is a question on the, in doing up the, the warranty deed and also the corporate resolution. Uh, Dominic was reviewing all this and again there's an issue as to where we didn't state in the initial contract, track two I think is the, the track that we're selling. Uh, we just listed the, the property in the, in the discussion within the, the FEC board meeting. It was the two acres that we have remaining out there. So what he recommended is that I bring that back to the board and you know amend the contract that we have to state what track it is on that particular plat and make it legal to, to so yes. there's no question, no doubt about that piece of land. Was Dominic the one who originally drew up these papers? Yes. But but I'm saying it, it wasn't caught, you know, uh, by anybody, you know, so, uh, so we're in the process of Him and it, you know, at the time it, it didn't occur to anybody that, that you know that should have been listed uh, when we were doing the initial discussion. Two remaining acres. The buyers understand that. The there were three potential buyers: Mr. David Strozier, Eric and Lisa Rodriguez, and Ben Reed. Uh, the board decided to sell the land to Mr. Um, uh, 
to Eric and Lisa Rodriguez because the initial purpose of the land was to build the fun park there. And that was done back in 1996, 1997. They came in with a plan that says they're going to build a bowling alley on that on those two acres. And that is something that the board felt that still, you know, needed something needed within the city. It would improve the quality of life of the town. So the board then decided at that point after discussion that they would sell the land um, to Mr. and Mrs. Eric uh, Rodriguez, you know, to build a, a bowling alley. Uh, so that, that was where it was at. Uh, and I didn't catch it, the board didn't catch it, nobody else seems to have caught it at the time. Uh, so now we're at the point where in order for this thing to be completely correct, closing documents and all the warranty needs, it has to state that it is, you know, and I don't have the track number on top of my head, but I believe it's track number two. And how long has this been going on? Uh, we've been uh, debating this since about August and September. Why in the world does it take so long to get something like a track name on a document and get it done? It was just identified. Where is that property? I'm sorry. Where is the property? You it's mentioned it's on Loma Drive, but it's property. not on Loma Drive. Uh, next to an, on the Helicus restaurant. Okay. Well, my, my, you know, no. part of my, you mentioned part of our uh, guidance too, I think, that, you know, is the Economic Development Board is when you look throughout the community, there needs to be more cooperation between the zoning and planning and the economic development because, you know, you, you, you look at that area there, is that really the best place for a, a place like that? And, you know. We're, we're talking in front of <coughs> those nice apartments, right? Yes, in back. In back of them? No, no, in front. In front, right, right, right in the front. The front, the front two acres. The back and the flood zone. The front two okay, acres. Okay, so it'd be closer to the highway where you can maybe yes. just get some highway. Well, they're right they're as you go into Lone Oak, you got an Helicus restaurant here on the left, mm -hmm. and then off to okay. the right. That used to be the old hiding property. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. No, it's not Paloma. You said? Paloma. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Paloma. Yeah. Yeah. Does the contract bind them to building a, a bowling alley or can they close it and then move the one that? We've got a deed restricted, right? Yes. It's written in the contract yes. there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> on land sale. And, and again, those are just projected sales. Now, on the projected sales tax revenues, 667000 is what's projected um, for the year. And up to now, uh, we've collected $212,487.68, averaging about 50, you know, 51, 52,000. Uh, a month, which is pretty much on target what we had said. And on this sales tax revenues, the city manager and I get together, we review what we received the last year, what we received in previous years. But this is different from before because of the increased activity in Eagle Ford. All the indicators are that this is going to continue uh, to grow. Uh, we've got more hotels coming in. We've got a couple of businesses, McCoy's, uh, the sports uh, store that's coming in out next to Murphy's. And if we continue the retail development and the current uh, businesses that we have in Floresville that sell retail and, and are able to collect sales taxes, it appears that it's going to continue at this rate. So I think that's a good number and it's a good projection as to what we're going to get. So taking all that into consideration, then the projected income for fiscal year 2013 is $1,137,765,000. Uh, so again, that's projected income based on what we already have in the bank. The expenditures is in for the year. And <clears throat> some of these are, are the best estimates that we can, that we can arrive at the beer warehouse. Is uh, thirty-five hundred uh, dollars uh, expenditures over the Christmas holidays. Uh, our heater blower went out. In fact, it went out the day of a wedding on the twentieth of December. So I had to bring in a crew on that Saturday to, to fix the problem. They fixed it, and I think we paid five hundred seventy-five dollars for it. Uh, 
labor parts, do the troubleshooting and correct the problem. Uh, but again, you know, that includes the maintenance and any small repairs. As the mayor says, uh, there are things the beer warehouse could be improved on, but we've not made any major. The dance floor would be nice. I'm sorry. Well, I'm the dance okay. floor. <laughs> well, we've got a floor on there, but yeah, no. we, you can now. It's improved. Can you? Yeah, okay. because we put we put plywood on the old oh, wood, okay. and every year we go in there and strip the wood and you know add some more varnish and stuff. It's at that point right now. But, but before you could, you know, go yes. through the, yeah. A little more sawdust. <laughs> Jesse, going to the back where you came up with that 3,500, uh, you had the, on that last week, you had maintenance 26, repairs 900, but I don't see insurance or cleaning or any of those other expenses that would be. On, on the beer warehouse? Yes, sir. Okay, the, the cleaning is included in that. In uh, maintenance or repair? In, in, the, in the beer warehouse total. You know. Okay, when you go back to the last page where you have it kind of where you have it to 3,500, yeah. maintenance 2,600, repair 900, so the 2,600 includes the cleaning? Right. So how about insurance? Uh, the insurance is part of the city, you know, we're covered by the TML and the uh, city insurance. Okay. So we don't pay insurance. And it's treated like a city facility. And I asked that question when we first opened up. Okay. Know, what, what happens if something, it's the same okay. thing, you know. Thank uh, you for the information. Bye. Now, one, one question that I think I've, I've asked this before, and <coughs> I still haven't uh, seen any results that, uh, uh, that would protect organization in the city. Uh, I know that there have been, they use it for all kinds of uh, functions there, but, you know, and uh, I know that uh, they do have uh, alcohol beverages, you know, consumed there. But, and I've said all the time that when you have a gathering, you know, a lot of times to be on the safe side, you need to have a police Yes. in the prison. I haven't yet to see anybody in there dressing the police outfit. Uh, I don't know if when they come here and they want to rent, that they're told that they have to have a officer when they have a gathering, you know, depending on what they're going to have and if they're going to have right. a Based on, uh, I, I spoke to the police chief about that, both Martinez and now uh, Mr. Herrera. And they recommended that we advise the people when they come in, and if they, and again, we ask them, are you going to serve alcoholic beverages? If they say yes, but even if they don't, they still sign a statement that says that they have to coordinate with the city police for security, and security can only be provided by the, by the police department if the police department deems that they need security. Now, that decision is left to the, you know, when they coordinate with the police department. And pretty much following the rules, like in San Antonio, if you rent a place from the city in San Antonio, you have to go to the police department, get a statement from them that says that you've been briefed and that if you're serving alcoholic beverages, then you will be required to pay X amount more for security. We don't that we don't have the extra payment for security here. What we do is we get them, we sign, get them to sign a statement that says that uh, they have been briefed about the requirement for the police department. And, you know, if a police officer comes up to the site and they've not done that, then they can make them do something at that point. Now, that could be changed again uh, if, if the board decides. You know, we've been fortunate, I'll say that, that we've been very fortunate that, you know, nothing serious has happened. <coughs> there have been incidents outside the facility in the, in the parking lot, you know, because I, I live close by. And I hear it sometimes when the music is very loud. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, they 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 they're consuming <laughs> beverages and they, you know they're feeling real good about it. And right. there have been incidents where you know uh, things have happened in the parking lot, not inside that I know of, but in the parking lot. Nevertheless, it's still in the city city area, city right. property. But I think know. the 
brings up a point, we should have a contract. I was going to say, you have a state on the state contract, yes. which would state all that, and then we should have a formal waiver that if they choose not to abide by whatever, then you have them sign that too. Which brings it to the question, who drafted our contract? I wrote it up, you know, for the, you know, it's basically a rental, rental agreement. And then the statement about the, the security requirement, I coordinated with the police department. But it was not drafted up by an attorney. So I think Graham's statement is appropriate. We can let you yeah. there, Does the 4A have security there? Is that required? Well, yeah. I'm sorry, sir. The 4A mm -hmm. is required? Uh, I, I don't know what, what you know, when you, if you have it. it you. you know, it's in the contract that you pay for security. I know this security. is a lot smaller. Yeah. You know, we can't take any consideration right. of acting on yeah. doing anything in regard to that right now, but I think that might be something we want to yeah. do yeah. with another item. Well, and, and one of the things I had spoken uh, before with the Secretary was that in going over all of this, we're going to create a committee to overview, yeah. uh, to, to do budgets and, you know, a budget committee. My recommendation would be to let the committee if, if the board wants to read the fiscal year 13 budget, is to go through the budget and then amend those things that, that the board considers need to be amended, changes that need to be made, and, and be discussed within the committee, brought back to the board. And if, if uh, I can get the copy of the contract that the 4A uses for the Civic Center, uh, if we want to put in a change where we require security, of course, the price goes up, you know, because we require them to pay for it, and then the, the police department wanted to provide security as extra revenue for their officers. So I saw no problem with that, if, if doing that. Uh, if if a, a function is held and somebody says, well, my husband works for the sheriff's department, he's a deputy, they tell that to the police department, the police department backs off. The police department does make uh, rounds. They do, even though there may or may not be security at particular events, they do make the rounds to the place. We've not had any incidents that I know of that resulted in any arrest or whatever uh, damage to property, either the people that are there or the neighbors. Uh, but I, I think that's something that you know the committee could look at and then you know come up with some uh, recommendations. Okay, in that uh, frame of thought that you just mentioned, on the 2013 expenditures that you have listed here, how many of these are basically expenditures that you say are quote unquote required that we have to do? And there are some of these that they propose, but that we exactly. not. So like the bear warehouse, we only, we're gonna have to spend it or get rid of. Right. Uh, Downtown. Personnel. We got to spend the personnel or money and, and or get rid of it. Change or debate that, but whether you need to keep personnel or not, but that's, you know, dependent on the will of the board. That's correct. On uh, this downtown renovation, have you committed? No. To and all there? of that is just, uh, you know, based on the initial plan that we had. And, and if you will, I'll just go down the line. Okay, and that's what we're kind of doing. That's right. On the downtown renovation, we don't have any commitments to anybody. Uh, this was something I briefed the board. There are some awnings that need to be repaired. As I mentioned before, on, uh, on page three, when, when I talked about some of the things that need to be done. Uh, but again, these are all, uh, you know, uh, optional, if you will. Yes, if, if we choose to continue working on the downtown, these are things that need to be done. There's more that needs to be done to this. Uh, on the downtown renovation, the parking lots behind the buildings. I've done all the research. I've got all the documents, you know, for the, the deeds of the people. We would have to do a separate agreement with each owner to get the right to use the parking lot as a public parking lot. Uh, Howard Berger and his staff prepared all that for us. Uh, we backed away from that when the city requested that we support infrastructure projects at the Civic Center, so we didn't continue with that. But in terms of awning repairs and painting, optional. Sidewear, sidewalk repairs, if y'all want to consider <coughs> that optional, optional. At the sidewalks, I will tell you there are some sidewalks that are in pretty bad shape uh, in the downtown area. Well, it, it seems like we need, we need to set some priorities here. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. So it's, it's 
good for us to know what's all on the table, but at some point we're going to have to say this gets done first because right. it's the most important thing. Right. But but I'm just telling you. Yes, sir. Uh, my turn okay. first. Jesse, on this awnings and repair, uh, you don't have anything scheduled, but is that on private businesses? That vacant? It, it's it's on basically on, on, on a, on a uh, building by building uh, basis. Well, I mean, if there's a business in it, they should be responsible. Because well, at, at the right. time, uh, <laughs> we had our audience were in so bad disrepair throughout the uh, whole downtown area. And these were things that the Main Street uh, Committee had come up with, things that needed to be done in the city. The board made the decision at the time, and I remember Mr. Um, Mark Mitchell made the comment that if the, if, if the building owners are not willing or cannot pay to have some of this work done, mm -hmm. and if the EDC and the city think that it's worthy of, of maintaining our downtown, then the city will do it. Some of the cities actually provide the grant directly to the building owner and give them X amount of money and expect them then to do the work. So they just give them, let's say, $15,000 or $10,000. The way we were doing it is we were doing it ourselves, spending an average of about three to five thousand dollars per awning, fixing the the awning, fixing the drainage problem on the water coming off the buildings onto the sidewalk. Uh, but again, that can all be changed, sir. And the other thing on the drainage on Third and C Street, I think I briefed that before. If you're coming up from Third uh, Street towards the old bank and the Merchant Building. Uh, there is water that flows in from where the, the old Eschenberg building was and where the, the cabins are now. And now the, all that area is impervious material. It used to be you only had that little dance area, but now the whole area is. And all that water now rushes on the third street. And it accumulates right at, as it makes the bend on the old merchant building. And then it goes down uh, C Street towards Big Dance and towards... Uh, I think right before it hits uh, Pat Brown Realty, there is a drain there. But on a good rain, the water is in <coughs> two and a half, you know, two to two and a half feet. And if it's <coughs> raining and the water's flowing, there's no way people can get to their cars. And you can go all the way around from where the barbershops are, uh, the barbershop and the insurance company, all the way back around the merchant building, all the way past where the cabins are, and you cannot access you know, vehicle or get on the sidewalk if it's raining. So the thinking there and talking with the city manager and the city road crews, Mr. Rudy Vasquez, is what's the best option to correct that. And the thinking there was to create a, a drainage uh, ditch that runs across from where at the where the merchant building property starts or and then goes across to the other side where the old bank was. And there is a culvert there, and try to dump the water then into that culvert. So which means you'd have to do a drain on the road and put one of those grates on it. Uh, and that would, again, probably resolve the issue. But, you know, uh, Mr. Heimer has looked at that as well, uh, you know, and we think that that would do it. But, but again, 15,000 was just an estimate. Uh, does it have to be done? It depends on the priorities. Yeah, one, once again, that's the streets and maintenance repair, I think, with the city. City. Yeah, and that there. needs to be allocated in their budget. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think we need to get no. be in the business of doing the city's repair work. I agree. Well, business part. If you look back again on the page three, uh, we had agreed when we did that uh, business park and uh, to build a sign with the uh, different businesses that are there just to indicate where they are. Uh, we designated 5000 for that. Uh, again, none of this has been spent. And then the repairs and the retention pond that runs parallel to Lone Oak, uh, right next to, to Chris Flores' property. Uh, based on the recommendations of our engineer and tech staff, you know, they required us to, to build that retention pond. It's not a deep retention pond. Where are we talking about? I'm sorry, I'm yeah. lost. 
at, at the low, low fuel, high fuel property okay, next to okay. an Ellicott's okay. restaurant. I <clears throat> and where is that pond at located out there? I'm sorry, sir? Where is the pond located? <laughs> it's, it's right parallel to the road. You can, it really isn't much of a pond. They call it a retention pond. You know, they just excavated, you know, about three feet. The entrance road? Yes, sir. Okay. Right as you come off on 181. Okay, the back. On restaurant is right on this okay. side. Just opposite the road from the restaurant. You'll see some uh, communications uh, boxes okay. there. Uh, and, and that's where the AT&T lines are, and I think Verizon or someone else has a, an easement right there. <coughs> but right in front of those boxes, uh, TxDOT required us to do um, a drainage, uh, what they call a retention pond, but it really isn't a big pond. It just holds the water uh, and detains it to keep it from rushing onto the highway. But because of the the rains that we did have after that was built, and if the grass hadn't set in right, there is some excavation that we're going to have to repair. Now that, I would say, is a must do. That's a requirement. That's a requirement. We have to do that one. Now the sign, the signs are optional. that we're putting back there, there really is, at this point in time, no business. It's just an apartment. Uh, you do have a sign business in the back. Uh, That's right. You did you know, yeah, Maddie and MAD. Something. They used to be with uh, Mag. Mag uh, yeah. Okay. Who's going to be maintaining that? Who owns that? Who's going to be maintaining it? Henry. Good question. I don't think we decided that whether they're going to see then. But but the sign, you know, we didn't commit to that with the businesses. You know, this is something that the board decided that we needed to do. But again, this is not a. Uh, it's not going to stop any businesses. Not going to hurt anybody. We don't do it. Okay. Jesse, who who was that? Uh, that, that last building at the end. On, on on the old cow camp. Yeah. Uh, that belongs to Ben Reed. He he bought, he, he bought the property. Right. From uh, the Palacios, uh, when the Holiday Express Inn came in, uh, there were some issues about how we're going to access the Holiday Express Inn. And the initial thinking. It appeared there was enough room, but yeah. there really isn't right. enough room. So they needed that area, right. and the uh, family had to move the building. Uh, so, you know, uh, he placed it back there, renovated it, changed it, made it uh, where it, it could serve as an office building, or in this case, it's a sign shop. You know, they, they brought all the stuff they had. They'd been working with uh, Megan Rotter, and it created their own <coughs> to print signs, t-shirts, those kind of things. But he owns the property that says He owns the property, he owns the building. It's an acre or how much? Uh, I, I think it's a, it's almost two acres uh, adjacent, because you also have uh, right behind the, right behind the apartments, there were two acres left in the back. So at what price did he buy the, uh, did he pay for? On, on that particular land, because the, the majority of it is, is in the flood zone, it was $5,000 an acre. Okay. Okay. And then on the veterans part, um, in discussing what we're <coughs> We, we need to extend the sewer line across Veterans Drive, which is on the drive going into the nursing home. Uh, the sewer line stops on the west side of that road. Uh, and in talking with the city, uh, you know, and, and they would do the work, extend, you know, cut the trench and extend the sewer line from that side to the other side of the road for future development on the six acres that we have. There's water and electricity on the other side. But the sewer line was not extended to that side when it was initially laid in. Okay. So I think that, you know, we could do that working with the city and get it done for about that amount. Okay. Going, uh, let me ask you another question on the Lone Oak uh, business park. Uh, I think the FEDC installed the curbing and the road and everything yes. on that facility. And that was done when, when we were doing the work up for the to get the nursing home to come in. Yeah. Initially. 
And uh, wait a minute, that's nursing home. Which area are you talking about? Talking about the, the bedroom. bedroom. No, he's the talking bedroom. about the right. private property. Oh no, he went to the low. Oh, no. He went back to the low. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't hear that. I apologize. Yeah, the the curbing and, and the road, the road and road was done by that was done by the FEC. Okay, when who installed the water and the sewer lines? There was a joint project with us in the city, FEC and the city. The, the water lines had been extended back in 1996. Uh, they had been put into that side, but they weren't, uh, the water line and uh, wasn't enough capacity and the sewer line was too shallow. So we had to go back and redig, you know, and reestablish the sewer line and put it at a depth that then it could serve as the apartments uh, and any future development that comes on, on that side of the property. The question, the, the, the reason I'm asking was because uh, sometime back I had heard, and this is why, you know, it, it puzzled me, but uh, I, that's why I wanted to know who, who eventually had done it, because I think uh, Freddie Ortiz did the work. He did the right? work uh, with the supervision of the city. It was a combination of, uh, we hired Mr. Ortiz and also hired, uh, <coughs> worked with the city manager, and the he laid in the sewer line and the city laid in the water line. They put in the mains and did the fire hydrants back there. Yeah. But it was a combination uh, with the city and Mr. Ortiz and the city inspectors uh, reviewed everything. Okay. And the reason that I'm asking is because uh, I was told that the sewer line is was the first one that was laid down and then later the water line was placed, you know, afterward. And the water line is on top of the sewer line. Now, uh, under, you know, normal situations, I don't think uh, cities allow for sewer to be, uh, for yeah, water and, to be on and, top and, of the sewer. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. I don't know, I'll, I'll have to get with the city manager, uh, uh, but, but I don't think it's, it's, it's two city standards. The, the city inspected every all the work. Yeah. That was designed. I remember looking at when I was on a P and Z, uh, and city engineer Mr. Heimer designed that, and they followed it. Right. So and it would have been designed the by the right. engineer, whether it's in the same ditch or not. It would have been with uh, Mr. Heimer. And and again, the city inspectors uh, reviewed all the work and passed uh, all the work that was done. And, uh, I just have, is there some kind of, y'all have a price, uh, pricing structure when y'all go to pricing these lots? We basically go with the, the city and they give us estimates on, on what we're doing on the work. No, no, no. when you go to no, sell it. Sell it. Because there's some the land oh, uh, <clears throat> it, it depends uh, on, on the property that, that we have and the past boards have set prices. But it depends on what uh, is being worked on or what the project is. And if it's a project the city is interested in, then, you know, uh, the city sets up, the, the FDC board sets the price. And it brings up a good, another good point, is appraisal of properties. You know, have we had recent appraisals? Sorry, say have we had recent appraisals on any of the, the properties? Or we just just uh, based on what the the county gives us. Okay, so we haven't required no. appraisals on no properties. Okay. Okay, the Rancho Grande. <coughs> on the veterans park, what are they building? What sorry, are sir? the buildings that they're building on this side? On the veterans park? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that uh, metal building that's going up, that's a Texas Health and Human Services building. Uh, and that's coming off, uh, right now you got that great building across the highway from where the auto parts stores are. Uh, auto zone. Yeah, and, right. And, right. 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 Okay. and that building is in a lot of, need, need a lot of repair. The state uh, requested that a new building built, <coughs> built for that. So the state so that, bought this property? I'm sorry, sir? The state bought this property? No, what it was, it was a private owner bought it. And what it is, is the way that the state runs it is they deal with the contractor, they build the building, 
and then to state specs, and then they lease it to the state, and they maintain the building, they do all the work. The state pays them X amount of uh, lease on the building, and this company maintains it. They bought the land. At what price did they buy? 25000 an acre. Is that what we've been doing? Yes, sir. And that other land that, that they're clearing up there? That, that's for an apartment uh, complex, okay. and at the same price, 25000 an acre. Right. Ram, you heard that? That extra land where they're doing the clearing now for an apartment. Oh, it's for an apartment. Yeah, the, old, uh, uh, the old Mackinville property. Yeah. Okay. Two, two who's, who's yeah. building that? Say again. Who's building that? A uh, developer by the name of Park Patterson. And they're also working at uh, Riverbend to build homes and things there. So I think a developer out of Austin is coming in to do that. Okay. okay. <clears throat> At the Veterans Park, uh, we allocated three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and well, that one. Veterans Park. That's right. Not the Veterans Park. You said Veterans Park. Not the Veterans Park. Okay. Thank you. At the Rancho Grande uh, Business Park, uh, allocated three hundred fifty thousand, and basically there we have to complete the entry to the park, the main entry. Uh, we're still waiting documents from Tech Stock. Uh, Mr. Larry Heimer is working with Textile to finalize that, but we believe the entry itself is going to run about 50000 give or take. Uh, these are estimates based on what the engineers are telling me. And then to complete the road, it is the main road, uh, which is Rancho Grande Road, coming in from 537 all the way to the back. Uh, complete doing work on the base material and laying it down and ready for uh, who asphalted is 300,000 that were estimated. That not, doesn't include asphalt? No, at, at this point, no. Uh, uh, because of, based on what you know, engineers are telling us, uh, we probably can get by uh, with seal coating and it'll last you know, three or four years. Now eventually we're gonna have to uh, uh, asphalt. So when you say complete road, what's it's really not complete then, it's just... Uh, it, it's uh, what, in, in the discussion with the companies is, initially we just wanted to be able to access the property. And then in talking with the companies, there are six companies already operating out there. And the road is sufficient to uh, provide support to them. Uh, if all these contracts come to be, and all these trucking companies come in, then we're going to have to do something to reinforce that road. But that's a FEC road. But how do the contracts read? Are we required? I'm sorry. Ask on the road? On the contracts for sale that you have, is it a requirement that we put asphalt on? It, it's a requirement that said no. It just that we would uh, provide a road. The road was not defined. So it's generic. Right. Yeah. Well, what does the county require? Say again? What does the county require for their. The county has nothing to do with they, you know, all they say is that we would put in a road. But it's because they say it belongs to the city, uh, to city standards. County doesn't, uh, you know, didn't have a say in that. Which the city decided to where the you know going to sign an agreement back when they did it that they would maintain it forever and ever, man. Right, the city would. The city would. It would never be county property. But, but the city standards now that means that you must understand. But, but at the time, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Big, big, big trucks. Yeah, those are heavy trucks, right? Sorry. Yeah. Those are heavy trucks that are going to be, yeah. going, to be going in and out. Ongoing like you say, you know, you wanted to put in the, 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 the seal coated, you know. Yeah. Seal coated will eat that yeah. road up in the less than a year, mm -hmm. you know. So all the water and electricity is, has been run out there? Say again? The water and electricity has been run yes. out there? Okay, so that's a potential, that gets it part way, no pun intended, it's a little bit down the road, but it may not be near it. It may not be uh, 100%. So this is something to be discussed at a later date. I recommend we look at the contract real hard as far as what it yeah. says that we're not bound, you know, that it is generic, but it's not this, this, or this, because it may have a big impact. And a little bit later, in that thing three, we go to Rancho Grande is brought up, because there's some serious discussion. Right. We need to have a meeting and that would be a, 
And it's very good. That's the point. It's good and cool or everything. And, and I'm for, you know, on any of these projects, I'm for spending what it takes. We've got to prioritize what we're doing, but I'm for spending what it takes to do it right. I'm getting yeah. tired yeah. of things being done in this town that aren't necessarily always done the way it should be. And you can look at some of the city facilities in this community, and there's a bunch of them that aren't even up to standard in terms of their own code compliance. And so I'm for prioritizing, like Mary Helen said, and making sure that we do what we need to do and do it right. And if we can afford to do it right on just one that's going to produce the most economic development, then that's what we do. And then we move to the next one. But that's that's for another day to come up with, you know, the, the, the plan itself. But um, you know, I'm, you can't cut corners. Uh, also, I believe you mentioned on that same one, just not an expense item, but to bring that into compliance with uh, uh, Tech Dot TCQ and all. There's a retention bond this year out there, and that uh, is, is you know. The requirement was thus to the counties to present the plan, <coughs> and then what the engineer drew up, you know, is, is something that's going to have to be discussed at, at another time. Okay. And, and the, the board, uh, board understood that, and you know, okay. it's not something that has to be done right now. Uh, it doesn't impact any of the companies that are out there, and I think I mentioned that um, when we had our meeting back in December about that. We've got the plans, and we've got everything that needs to be done. Now. If we do the retention pond the way that it's currently structured, that'll come out to about seven hundred thousand dollars to do just the retention pond. And it's as growing. And, and if you want to do it right, then it's, that's that's what it's going to cost. You know. And if we don't get to comply with all the rules and regulations, I'm sorry, we don't get to comply with all the rules and regulations. Well, the requirement is not a TCQ requirement. It's you know it's it's a local requirement. Well, okay. Okay. I I tend to you know to agree with everything that you're mentioning right now, and I think we just need to you know make sure that we don't fall into the situation where the city you know continues to depend on this organization to bail them out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm hoping that right now the way it is and the way it's set up, my understanding is that. It, 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 it will leave us alone, I hope, and we will be able to do a lot of these projects that have not been done for the last four, five, six years, right. you know. They've just been sitting there, you know, collecting dust, you know. And, and I agree with everything that's been said, you know, about do it, do it right, you know, but sometimes we don't have all the resources right. to do it right. We can do it right and, and then do the it. the question is then don't do it. No, I understand, but but you know, then if if you don't do certain things, then you can't open it up for development. You can't open it up for the companies to, to come in, especially now with these oil companies. They're used to working in areas that don't have uh, <coughs> infrastructure, especially on the roads, uh, and and they do a lot of things themselves to to help the situation along. You know, but I understand what's being said. We don't want to become a freer. I'm sorry. We don't want to become a freer. <laughs> The only question I guess I have on Rocco's Rod before we move on that how would it ever approve as a subdivision with it not being complete for us to start selling lots? Uh, the county, and that was the agreement that the county made, that uh, they waived those rules for us. And what they required us to do was provide them a plan on the road, give them a final survey of the property, which we've done. Uh, provide them a plan, if any uh, flood retention issues, that, and how are you going to uh, resolve those? Uh, so those are those requirements. And, uh, and also that the companies comply with the county uh, uh, septic tank uh, systems. And that was it? That was it. Uh, and then the city waived our normal requirement. Basically, yes. And I also understand when this property was bought, the, the property was bought. But there were no allocations of any kind of resources. No feasibility study, to no develop. Nothing done with it. That probably wasn't the best piece of land to buy. You think? Because it had issues <laughs> with it, you know, even from the beginning. Uh, you couldn't access the property. 
except for the little bitty road that George Martin <coughs> uh, okay. made for himself. You know. okay. So we've been doing, you know, keep that property open and do the best you can with what you have. But, but again, that can change. Thank you. Okay. okay. The infrastructure project on Business Loop 181, I mean on US 181, uh, McCoy Sewer Extension, uh, we're estimating, you know, we, we have an agreement of about 125,000, I believe, but we just put an extra 10,000 in case. Uh, but that's going to start uh, within another two weeks or so. They're already got the plans into the city. They're going to do the work. Their engineers are going to do the in coordination with the city engineer and tech staff. And then we pay the engineer, uh, we pay the company to do the work. And that's to extend the sewer lines from the Walmart side of the highway, underneath the highway, over to the other side. And hoping that there are no problems. The reason I added another 10,000 in there, when we did the work for Walmart, it, it stopped the whole work when they were doing the excavation and they hit some water pockets. And the water pockets were filling up all the trench that was being dug for the sewer lines. So we had to go back and reconfigure, you know, how we were doing that uh, entrenchment there, and then come up with a new plan so circumvent that water that didn't stop. It was water bubbling up from the. At least it wasn't a blind spider that came out of nowhere. Or a salamander or something. <laughs> On this extension, and to me, the hundred and twenty-five thousand is very reasonable. It's, it's cheap to bore under two highways. Right. The U.S. highways of Texas that really. Are we protected anywhere at all? Because I think it's cheap. They, when they get in there, they do have a free bar. Yes, they and in that contract it says we'll spend up to this amount, and that's it. And then, but the, McCoy's then would, would pick up the tab on tab. everything else. Okay. Yes. But they have to continue the project. They oh, yes, just stop. yes. And, they, and it's all in the agreement that was made between the city, the FEC, and McCoy's. And there's a legal document that was drawn up for that. Because the footage they're boring is a lot. It's a lot. $125,000. And there, and there may be some water issues because they're going right along the side of, uh, of the Seguin Creek. Yeah, or 181 caves in. Right. Yeah. Oh, geez. So they're responsible for that. And the agreement puts all that into play. That's good, because it, somebody's going to get the last slides. Okay, at the La Quinta, we had allocated $100,000, you know, for all the infrastructure. Uh, and even with this, 15,000 is basically an extension of a water line uh, to an area where they were going to do some landscape and, and uh, a water feature that they put in. Uh, so total, I think we spent at, at the La Quinta about $85,000. You know, we had to bring in, that site had no water, that site had no sewer. It's right in the middle on the on the north of that is the, you know, the, those little houses and, and that business. Blue Casa Village. Yeah, the Blue Casa Village. On the south side is Brother Biddy's church, and, and I think there were some other buildings there. What used to be the Tally, you know, uh, retail center there. But that particular site was skipped over. It had no water. It had no sewer. Don't understand how that happened, but it did. Uh, so the commitment there to the family and the company building the La Quinta is that the city would bring in the water and, uh, and the sewer line. There were some issues. Uh, we had to expand a little bit more in terms of engineer cost because of issues that uh, our engineer was having with uh, the engineer that La Quinta had. Uh, but finally all that got resolved because there are some issues there on the water and sewer lines coming up to that site. We couldn't get any easements from anybody from the Blue Casa Village. We were working easements with Brother Benny's church. And finally, it was, it was worked through with Brother Benny and, and his group. We were able to bring the water lines and the sewer lines. The, the water lines from the south, the sewer lines we had to dig under US-181 and bring the sewer from a G or J Street, just uh, south of your building, and bring those underneath. Uh, Highway 181 and provide sewer. So that was a, an expensive project there for that. 
And then that whole, the corner's all flooded. But, but again, there's that, you know, it's, it's that four or five acre tract did not have water, cannot have sewer line, middle of the city. Well, has anything been done to the people that live on, is it J Street? Where Phil's Beauty Shop used to be, the woman who lives there is raising all kinds of you know what because the water flooded her place more than once. And where's it coming from? From right, across right, that right creek, there. In, okay. right down J Street. Yeah, down yeah. And, and I know that the city has looked at that. They also have some issues with some sewer lines right there where the G Street meets 181 right on the side of the Best Western. Mm -hmm. I know that that's yeah. part of the plan that they're looking at. I don't know what all they have done in terms of the drainage or anything else. Well, what about the retention pond that's sitting in front of that other uh, hotel? Executive Inn and Suite, they're, they're still working with Techstat on that. Uh, the owner came to see me right before Christmas and said that, you know, and I put it on the list of things for future projects, that he wants to make a presentation to the board and see if the board uh, is willing to participate with the uh, executive in its suites to help with the cost of that uh, drain. What have we done for them so far? None. Nothing. Really? And they, uh, they didn't ask us for any assistance. They came in, they, they purchased the land. Keep in mind that a lot of these hotels want to build as quick as they can and take advantage of Eagle Forge Hill. Uh, so they were moving in on their own. Uh, in, in many ways and get ready for uh, potential work that's coming down the line. But we've not done anything for them. What have we spent on the Quinta total, do you think? I'm sorry? What do you think has been spent? About 85000 total. We had allocated 100000 uh, because of the engineer cost, the cost of, uh, we weren't sure how much it really was going to cost in terms of the sewer lines and also the water lines. Uh, initially we thought we were going to have to cut that concrete, that's on, that wall of concrete that's in front of Blue Castle Village. And text that had pretty much given us the okay <coughs> that there would have been a more expensive project to redo that whole retention wall, put the water line in there, and then at the same time try to figure out where the sewer line was going to come from. The initial thinking was that the sewer line would go behind the Blue Castle Village, and if we could get an extension uh, right away from them, uh, an easement, and we could bring in the sewer from behind them. They didn't want to give us any right of ways there. Uh, so that changed everything else, and every every time a change was made, we had to come up with a different engineer plan, how to bring the water and sewer to that site. That site proved to be very difficult, uh, but that's done, it's there. The La Quinta Hotel is open now for business. They haven't had a grand opening ceremony, they will. Everybody will be invited. Uh, and they expect that to be fully nice booked property. in short it time. Yeah. It turned out really nice. It, it did, oh, yes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Compared to what it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Continuing on. <coughs> Personnel, uh, that 90000 252000 includes my salary. I was given a 5% raise by the board. And just so the board knows, I don't enter into the debate or discussion with them. I don't tell them what I'm looking for. Of course, anybody wants to get paid more. Uh, they met in executive session. I did not attend. Uh, for anybody that's interested, it's 14 0 Alabama. For anybody that's interested in Colorado. Right. So far. Uh, first quarter. End of the first. Two minutes left. Before you turn that on, I guess I'm going to win my bet. Good idea, thank you. I'm going to throw my taxes about that. <laughs> anyway, when we were doing the, the board was doing the discussion, I was out with Mr. Mr. out there uh, talking while the board was in session. Uh, since I've been hired, I have never proposed a raise. The board comes to me and I said, well, you're the board, you tell me. So anyway, that 90252 covers personal costs. Now what I've done since about September, uh, I've hired Mr. Vicente Griego on a temporary basis. I asked for the board's permission to do that. He was the public, uh, city public administrator. He knows about uh, sewer lines, water lines, uh, roads, and he can come up with estimates in conjunction with what the city is providing me. But he, you know, adds a little bit to what we're doing. 
Currently, uh, I've been using them very sparingly because I've basically put everything on hold. Uh, and then until I get further guidance from the new board. Uh, but that can change as well. That's not a must do. My position, of course, uh, is also. Okay, but, but we talked about benefits, I think, maybe even at the first meeting. Um, well, not even benefits, but things like insurance in the event that you got hurt on the job driving that vehicle right. around, or the they got hurt. Right. Independent yeah. contract agreement. No, and I asked the city for, they have a contract with them because they're also using to do inspections. Uh, and it's basically a straightforward contract that says we're going to pay you X amount an hour and we'll call you as needed. And as you know with me, I don't have a contract. I don't have any kind of insurance or anything. So uh, thank God I've not gotten hurt or, you know. And the vehicle that we drive is covered by the TML insurance. Is that the same vehicle we had before? Yes. Uh -huh. So one we bought uh, about, what, eight, nine years ago, I guess. It's, it served its purpose well. So but but that is something that has to be, <coughs> you know, the that insurance. That's my question, though. Is your payroll part of the workers' comp payroll for the city? No. No? I'm paid by the, I'm hired by the board and paid by the board. That's what, where the payroll taxes is. Yeah. That's yeah, it's not, and I, I, I it's, that. it's not that's been endorsed on to your knowledge? No. That'd be something that I would need to so who, check. Who actually writes your checks out? We do. I do. We do. I do. Okay. I write all the checks so for the yes, the, the uh, FICA tax has gone up. I'm sorry? The FICA, FICA. tax has gone up. Oh, yes. So FICA <laughs> tax, uh, the Medicare, federal tax withhold. On the checks, uh, especially for payroll, I hire them as Kathy Richardson to come in. And she does the bulk of the checks. She reconciles the bank statements, uh, makes any changes to the you know, QuickBooks Pro. She actually is coming in tomorrow to help me get ready for the auditors and prepare all the documentation that needs to be done to present to the auditors. Okay. But again, that, you know, any personal cost at the discretion of the board. Administration that's basically running the office keeping the office operational. Um, and what the cost that you see there are pretty standard. Uh, the amounts for the telephone, automobile, supplies. I try to keep, buy as little supplies as I need to. I, I buy pens, paper for the board, a lot of, you know, uh, Xerox papers and machines that we use. And the machines, we use them until they, they break down and wear out. You know? So currently the computers that we have, I think they're about five or six years old. The printers that we have are about eight years old. Um, and the phones that we have inside the office are, you know, they're one step above the dial, you know, phones. Uh, but, but it seems to be working. Uh, travel and training on that, to explain that, uh, we use that fund uh, when we went to Austin to, uh, for the training that we did, you know, for uh, Economic Development Law, Open Meetings Act, etc. Accounting. Uh, okay. While I'm thinking of that, whoever has not done that training has got to get it done. Sixty, 60 days. days is already gone, isn't it? Right. You know what we're talking about? The the Open Meetings Act and the we're in the city public information. Well, uh, that's what. That's what the other thing you know, right into that you were going to get in with the city. City thought you had to. Right. They've had their before we even had our meetings at the moment. He had indicated that he was going to get together with him and try to see if we could yeah. do one. If they cog back to the center. I'll check with Mr. Johnson. I've asked him before, but he didn't give me an answer, so I'll check on that. The accounting normally, you know, uh, the amount on that is uh, for um, the audit, the auditor, you know, okay. uh, legal fees. That's uh, we're going to have to adjust that amount. Uh, that's what we get uh, set aside. But given the, the lawsuit that the county filed against us, uh, I believe we have spent about, and, and this again is just an estimate amount as to what I have, about twenty-eight thousand dollars on that. Uh, but, but that, 
that's over with. Uh, we don't have any more expenditures on that. The office lease, uh, $7,200. If I can go back to the second. On legal, uh, we get to use Dominic yes. as been, but we've never thought about hiring or going out and engaging an attorney firm on a retention or retainers or anything? That, that has been discussed, but in the past, uh, prior to this year, we really didn't have that many legal fees. And I know that the city is considering hiring a um, legal